Today we're talking about candlesticks, but not only about regular candlesticks, but I'll show you exactly step by step on how to trade them in a more advanced way. And although I'm going to talk about all the popular candlestick formations, candlestick patterns, and even a few more that you may have not heard about yet, I will also always refer to the concept of context. And you may have heard me talk about this price, maybe the king in trading, but context is the emperor. Nothing beats context. Nothing is more important than context. And this is true for whether you trade price action, chart patterns, candlesticks, indicators, even if you trade fundamentals or any other trading style, context is always the most important thing. And I will show you exactly step by step how to read candlesticks with context. So let's just get started and then you'll see what I mean. We're starting here with a spinning top. What we have is a body in the middle and then two roughly equally large wicks to the upside and to the downside. And on its own, the spinning top cannot tell us a lot here. It is neutral. So in this case, if you see a neutral candlestick, it can be a doji, it can be like in this case a spinning top. We would just wait and see what happens afterwards. And what we see here is now the candlestick of an inverted hammer. You can see we have here the body of this candlestick is roughly more or less at the two thirds um, at the top. And we have a long, long wick to the downside. The long wick to the downside shows us that there's an increase of bearish pressure. And we're coming here from a bullish trend, right? The market has been moving up. And then slowly as the market moves higher, we see in the spinning top and then in the inverted hammer, an increase in wick size. This shows us that suddenly the buyers are not as strong anymore and more sellers are coming in and are able to push the price down intra candle. Granted, the market still closed quite higher here, but there was a lot of intra candle bearishness and this is a very, very important sign. This shows us that the bearishness is gaining strength and the bullishness is fading. So we know a little bit more about what is going on here already. We can also look left and see that here's probably the origin of this downtrend. Here we should have a demand or supply area where this is happening. Another context that is really helpful here. Now we have the candle that we would call a Marubozu. And this is just a very strong bearish candle. We also can refer to this as a momentum shift. So we can see what we have. It is the spinning top. Then we have our first inverted hammer the second inverted hammer, also with a very long wick. And then we have the Marobozo, a very strong bearish candle. And now this looks very, very different than just a spinning top. And this is something that is a very important concept. Actually, a lot of amateur traders that I'm mentoring and working with, they make their trading decisions too impulsively. They're always scared that the market will, will run away without them. First of all, it is very rare that the market is just going to take off in one straight line and you're going to miss it. And if it does, so be it. There will always be a next opportunity. So what I would recommend for new traders or struggling traders, be a little bit more calm when you do your price analysis. First of all, there will always be another trade. And second of all, the market generally doesn't take off in one straight line. You will get plenty of opportunities usually. And now you can see we go from neutral in this uptrend to then more bearishness, even more bearishness, and then a lot of bearishness suddenly. And also what you can see the, how the market closes is quite important. Here we had the highest close in this uptrend from this very strong bullish candle. The next close was here, then here. Then the market tried to make a higher close, but shows a lot of weakness. We are not really able to get above this. The market is always staying in this range here. And generally what you want to see in an uptrend is that the market keeps pushing higher and keeps pushing higher, which is not the case, especially in the context of a lot of bearish wicks. That's very um, a different picture. And then you have the strong bearish candle. This is now what we call a momentum shift. This is not 100% engulfing candle. We are not engulfing the previous candle at the high side completely, but you can see this is obviously a very, very important shift here. And at this point, I would say it is very bearish. And if you could go, for example, to the lower time frame, this is the one hour. <clears throat> we could go, for example, to the 15 minute, trade a break and retest after this candle. This is what you would use then for an entry candle or at least for a trigger. You go to the lower time frame, you time your entry and then you look for shorts. And then you can see what we have afterwards, an inside candle that we will come back to later, another outside candle. 
So this would be your break and retest. You can see that very classic break and retest. I made many videos about this in the past. And then the market unfolds to the downside. So very, very nice step-by-step -step trade study. And I have a few more. So I talked about the inverted hammer and now we have the regular hammer. Some people may refer to this as pin bar. And very important in this video, I may not use the standard um, nomenclature of the candlesticks. Maybe I'm using different terms or slightly different terms, but in the end, I would recommend to not get hung up on the terms and what you call a specific pin bar. There are just so many variations, but look at what the candlestick and the market is showing you. So what we have here is the hammer, the pin bar. It's characterized by a long wick to the downside here. In this trend, we're moving lower, and this is the candlestick that's going with the trend. But the close is at the opposite side of the candlestick wick. It's also a very weak close, which is also typical. So at first, I would say this is more of a sign of rejection. You can see the market moved lower. We have some lows here that the market was not able to break through. Then this candle made a breakout attempt the breakout attempt was rejected and the market closed here back inside the range. So this is a sign of rejection, not very bullish sign. However, again, don't make a trading decision just based on one candlestick. We can zoom out to get a little bit more context. And first of all, we have trend context. Where is this happening? In a long downtrend. You can see we have multiple trend waves. Wave one, consolidation, wave three, maybe some consolidation here, and then we just grind slower, uh, lower. So we could say, okay, this is a fulfilled five wave Elliott wave count. And looking for rejection does make a lot of sense. The longer a trend goes on, the higher the likelihood that the, the sellers in this case are taking profits. The people who started to sell here are now sitting on a healthy amount of profits probably, and they are more inclined to sell. So that is uh, to buy, sorry, to exit their trade on a buy on a sell trade that's uh, long and that is contributing here to the loss of momentum. So that makes then sense to look for a pin bar here. It doesn't, it wouldn't make sense to look for a pin bar early on in a downtrend because the likelihood of um, the continuation is much higher than a reversal. So you want to look for those rejection signs late on in a trend. We could also look for um, round numbers. Here's the big round number 0.63 very important round number as well. Now we just follow the price action and we see the next two candles are really what is interesting. So we have the um, pin bar, inverted pin bar, or inverted hammer, whatever you call it. Then here, remember, this is the same what we have seen in the first example. In this example, we are looking at an uptrend. The wick was to the downside. Here we have now the downtrend and we have the wick to the upside. This shows us that the market is now pushing higher very different from what we have seen here in the past. The market was always pushing lower, closing lower because all the candlesticks are red. Here we have green candlestick, which means the candle closed higher and the market pushed higher. That's a bullish sign. And then, especially here, we have the momentum candle. And this is very typical for those reversals or continuations in general. We call it acceleration. And you can use the words and the, the term and the concept of deceleration and acceleration very nicely in trading. So deceleration shows you when or it happens when the candles get smaller, which happened here, right? We had some fairly decent sized red candles. They get smaller and smaller and smaller. That's what we call deceleration. The market is slowing down. Then as the trend now shifts seemingly, we are seeing candles getting larger. That's what we call acceleration. So that's the nice gradual shift of how a market turns. And then you can see afterwards the market unfolded higher. This is the f uh, example, by the way, in the beginning. But you can see how we nicely move from downtrend with this pin bar to the uptrend. Uh, then we have our spinning top, inverted pin bar. And then as we've seen, the market rolled over again. And this happened right here at where the trend started. So some really good um, starting examples. We have now another inverted hammer, and I think this is a very underappreciated pin bar. I obviously have a lot more going forward in this video, but I want to start with that because not a lot of traders are aware of this. And I think it can really help you make better trading decisions. So we have the small body here in an uptrend, very important. We have the wick to the downside, whereas previously you can see, first of all, we have large candles, very green, very large candles, and we have the wick to the upside mostly. Now we have a small candle, what is called deceleration. The market is slowing down, not pushing higher anymore as strongly. 
and we have the wick to the downside which shows us now a selling interest and where does it happen right at the previous high point so here's a high cluster we have here our round number 877 very important context here and what we have then is a second inverted hammer hammer so we have two inverted hammers which shows us that the market is really not having too much strength here the buyers are not able to get the price higher which means that we don't have as many buyers anymore as we had here probably a lot of the buyers were buying down here because obviously it's more lucrative to buy at the lowest possible price and then as the market goes higher the people who bought down here are more inclined to sell exit their trade and that is also contributing to this fading momentum and it's happening at a resistance area so all of this makes a reversal very likely or at least not a continuation and you can use that information in many different ways if you have bought down here then use that information to time your exit in a more profitable way at least i would say if you see something like that think about scaling out of your position exit partially 50 percent 30 percent 70 percent whatever is in your trading plan but at this point i would say the likelihood to see continuation is not as high anymore especially now and what we see now is a very strong candle here not 100 percent engulfing but i would say this is classified as an engulfing candle as well and this shows you now that after the fading momentum here the lack of bullishness the bears are now really strong in the market probably here there was a lot of profit taking going on in the two inverted hammers which means that more and more buyers left the market and more and more sellers probably entered the market because now the price was high enough to make sense for sellers to come in so at this point a reversal to the downside is a lot more likely than a continuation and i would recommend to always approach your trading decisions from this question what is more likely to happen obviously we will never know with 100 percent certainty what is going to happen next but if you can build a case where you say okay at this point it's more likely to see short versus long moves that will help you make better trading decisions also it helps you make better risk management decisions traders will say oh wow this looks like it has to go down they are too locked in into their short position and this means that they're then often overconfident and they will risk too much because they think the market can only go one way but if you believe and if you're open to the idea that yes it's more likely to go down but there's still the possibility that we're going to go sideways or up then you're not going to risk as much because you know that you you don't know actually that what is going to happen so you know you don't know a lot and that is very important as a trader always stay humble and you can see the market afterwards rolled over we went back here into this origin of the move very important um, support and resistance level down here also supply and demand area in here and we can nicely follow our transition here a little a few extra tips on candlestick reading if you have been following me you have probably seen this um, graphic it's also in my book I will link the book in the video description and it's good to put the candlesticks on a spectrum and this helps you a lot in just gaining a, a good understanding of candlesticks without having to put the names or terms on bullish uh, or candlesticks in general so if you have a very strong bullish candlestick without any wick that would be the most bullish signal then as you have more wicks to the upside or to the downside can be both that is then less and less bullish generally the smaller the body the less bullish it is also obviously the position of the body is important is the body more at the higher side or at the lower side but then it depends on the context in a bullish trend if you see that the body is then suddenly at the lower end it shows you rejection at the tops for example a neutral candle is what we have called here the doji or the spinning top that we have already seen so typically what you see is two equally large or roughly equally large uh, wicks to both sides and then a relatively small not a large body in the middle and then we have the same on the bearish side the, the longer and the stronger the candlestick body without the wick the stronger the signal and also what i find always really really enlightening because a lot of traders say that candlesticks are a so-called in quotes amateur or retail signal basically they mean this is something that only the amateurs use the professionals will maybe use something else 
but a candlestick is much more than just a candlestick. So we're starting here on the daily chart and we can get so much information from a candlestick if we just understand the microstructure. Because imagine one candlestick on a daily chart are six candles on a four hour chart and 24 candles on a hourly chart and 48, hour, uh, 48 candles on a 30 minute chart and 96 candles on a 15 minute chart. So we go here from the daily candle. This is our candle on the daily chart. Now we're on a two hour. So we have now 12 candles and the 12 candles show us the microstructure. And on the candlestick, we only see the market moved higher and we closed lower. But here we can actually see way more. So we can see the strong move higher, then the very strong rejection, and then we closed here, right? Right at the support level, a lower bounce, as you may have known if you've been watching my videos from the past. Low, lower bounce, very strong rejection, unsustainable move. But we can go even further. Now we're on the 30 minute. This is now our pattern. And you can see how we nicely moved into the channel. We had our failed breakout, head and shoulders here at the top of the channel. So we can see we tried to get out of the channel, but rejected it and then violently moved into the lower side of the channel, had the lower bounce, then broke and retested the channel from the downside, and then the downtrend unfolded. So you can very nicely see that a candlestick is way more than a candlestick, and it can be much more if you know how to look for it. And that is the beauty of candlesticks or price action or chart patterns in general. You can always understand it in the micro context. You can go to higher time frames, lower time frames, and so gain a lot more information out of it. Another example here, we're starting on the daily time frame, and here what we see is an engulfing candle, right? And when we go to the lower time frame from the daily to the four hour, the engulfing candle, just one candle on the higher time frame, now we have that information. We have a strong uptrend. Then we have inside candles, rejection candles, neutral candles, then this huge rejection candle here, fake out candle, and here very strong close engulfing candle. And then if we go from here, four hour to 60 minute, so one hour, then we can see that this is this actually. We have here um, a price divergence, a double top. So if you put an RSI on here, this will be a divergence. You have your double top here. Then you have your strong selling period, the strongest selling that we have seen in all of this uptrend, which is very, very important. Whenever we see a, a shift from more bullishness to more bearishness, that's the key. Then we have a lower bounce. We retest here the lows as resistance, and then the market unfolds to the downside. So candlesticks are more than just candlesticks. Candlesticks are really everything that you need when it comes to understanding price action. And it's a great starting point. And I would recommend that you stay open to candlesticks if you're one of those traders who said in the past that they don't work, they're too amateur, like they're a retail concept, and they can actually be very, very helpful tools. So now we have an engulfing candlestick. This is the engulfing candlestick. You can see very large red candle and some traders may refer to it as an outside candle because this candle is completely outside of the previous one, two, three, four, five candles. So this is a very strong signal, very strong momentum signal. Also, what is interesting is the context here. The context is a pullback. So what we see here is that we were previously in an uptrend. The uptrend seems to have topped out here. We had a bearish phase, then a consolidation bullishness, and then the engulfing candle shows us that the uh, pullback is over and we are re resuming back into the new downtrending phase. So that is quite interesting. If you would go, for example, to a lower time frame, um, you would put a moving average on here. What you would probably see is that the pullback is retesting the moving average. Or if you have been watching my Bollinger Band videos lately, this would probably be a Bollinger Band pullback as well. So great, great um, signal here. And also what is important that is that we're breaking the lows here. So the market and this candle is already triggering here the entry on the lows. So this is quite important just generally looking at how is the market trading around previous swing highs and swing lows. So at this point, I would say it's quite uh, likely, not 100%, because we will never know what will happen next. We can always work with probabilities only. But at this point, I would say it's very likely from all of what we have seen here that we're going to see a push. The push, at least probably here into the previous supply and demand area, and then maybe further afterwards. But you can see this is what happens. Engulfing candle back into the lows, 
and that's where the market or where I took the screenshot here for this example. Bullish engulfing in an opposite context. So it seems like the market was in a downtrend. We had here our double bottom and then rolled over, have our first swing low here. This is what we call a liquidity run, very deep pullback here into the previous supply and demand area. Why is this a liquidity run? Not only because of where the wick is pointing into, but also how it is reacting away from it. So this is a very explosive green candle. I can move this away. And then you can see how big this candle is. It's also completely outside of previously everything that has happened. This could be a news driven candle. So maybe some inflation data, NFP data, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. What happens, uh, what really matters is how it looks on the charts and what it does. So very clear, the market is rolling over into an uptrend. We break the highs and then we have the retest previous resistance is becoming support and then we have another engulfing candle we have this little inside candle and then this huge outside candle the wick is also interesting we're poking below the lows here and we're rejecting it and moving higher at this point again likelihood bearish bullish neutral what would you say i would say probably everyone could agree that at this point it's more likely to have more bullishness if you are not comfortable trading below the lows or the highs sorry then I would say wait a little bit more, wait one more candle. In general, that's I think a very good advice that you can have if you're unsure about the market, wait one more candle. Either it's gonna confirm your idea or it's not gonna confirm your idea. But in any case, it is you're very happy in most cases that you have waited one more candle. You can see, waiting one more candle would have given us this. We would have broken out above the highs and then we're still early on in an uptrend. Inverted hammer with a very interesting context here. So the uh, inverted hammer is this one, very large uh, wick to the upside, very small body here to the downside. The context, let me remove that. So we have a lot of context here. First of all, a long downtrend. Always when I see a long downtrend, I ask myself, okay, the sellers here, wherever you have sold up here, what would you have done with your target? Probably a lot of traders would have used this as a target, right? Also, a lot of traders will maybe use end of day targets, end of week targets, but when you have a chart context target, that's also very good because a lot of traders will use that. So the trend has been going on from here to here quite a long time and the traders who sold up here are very likely to take profits, especially even if you, for example, if you have not considered this as a hard target, but then you're in your short position and then you see that you have those fluctuations around that level you are now going to really start thinking about exiting your position or at least taking partial profits. So even if you have not had this as a hard target in the beginning, if you see the market is seeing more struggles here, more volatility, it's not as easy able to move lower, that's definitely going to be on your mind afterwards. Also, when we look at the candlesticks previously, you can see the candlesticks to the downside have strong closes to the downside and almost no wicks to the upside. Here only after the market has started, Early on in a trend, you will often see the candlestick wicks to the upside, but then as a trend matures, you don't see many candlestick wicks to the upside, but this changes here very significantly. Then you have concept of deceleration acceleration. This is a pattern that I will focus on in later parts of this video. We call it morning or evening star. It's one of my favorite patterns overall. And what we have is clearly strong bearish candles, neutral candle, small bullish candle and then increasing bullish candles in size and also volatility. I mentioned it in my last candlestick video, the quote from George Soros, he said that volatility increases at turning points. A turning point is where the market goes from, in this case, uptrend, uh, downtrend to potentially uptrend. And when you see that volatility increases, volatility means candlestick, uh, candlestick wick size typically, so the back and forth, that is another context that is very important. Why is this happening at turning points? Because you suddenly, in a downtrend, let's start here. In a downtrend, what you have, mostly sellers, not many buyers. So the market is very one-sided. This changes here. Suddenly you have the sellers probably running to the door and you have more buyers coming into the market. So both sides get active again. And there's a lot of back and forth. And this back and forth is then also visualized in the candlestick size and the wick size rather. So very, very important. Also, I marked it here, fake out. This is a low 
the market traded below it and is now back above it. This is what we call a fake out. A very, very important pattern. We've seen it here at the top as well. Market made a high. We run into the high again but wasn't, we're not able to close even above it. We have a lot of wicks here to the upside. We faked out the high, a failed breakout, maybe some traders will refer to it, and then we roll over. So very, very important context here is coming together. And at this point, again, ask yourself, likelihood, bullish, bearish, neutral. Bearish likelihood, I would say, yes, we could still see this as a break and retest to the downside, but if I would bet on more bearishness, I would wait for the market to close below the low. Bullishness, I would say the likelihood is very, very high. You could go to a lower time frame, or if you're very aggressive, go long, stop loss underneath it, so your stop loss would be triggered if the bearish scenario unfolds again, and I think that would make a lot of sense in this context. You can see the market accelerated higher, moved back into the previous top, and then at this point I would not be surprised to see more volatility come into the market, more wicks, more sideways phases, because this is an area that if you have been long, you would have on your radar for um, target placement, obviously. Engulfing gap. So here we have an engulfing candle and a gap. What is a gap? So you can see the candle, the green candle here, closed here. The red candle, the high is here. So there's a difference um, between the high of the green and the high of the red, and that is what we call a gap. And a gap is typically observable on stocks, indices, commodities, forex, not so much, only on the Forex weekend, so the, the Friday to Monday candle. But if you trade any other market, gaps are pretty common. So very important, the gap shows you exhaustion, the market jumped higher, but then was not able to continue on the path of the jump. So we have exhaustion, the market moves lower, and that is a very, very important uh, bearish signal. What we have afterwards is the context. Again, just seeing this, I would not make any trading decisions. If I see this and I would be in a long trade, I would be a little bit more cautious and I would follow this trade and this market more cautiously, thinking about closing the trade slowly. But just seeing the engulfing candle, not enough information yet to do anything. But this changes significantly afterwards. We have another attempt of the market to run into the highs. You can see this wick here is slightly poking above this candlestick and rejected. Again, a fake out, failed breakout, double top, whatever you will call it. The information and what you get out of this pattern is the same. So now we clearly see that the market is showing weakness. It's having problems trading into highs. This was not the case in the past. The market made highs, traded sideways and then continued higher. Made high, sideways, higher. Made high, sideways, higher. And we have also never seen such a large bearish candle here in this uptrend. So clearly, we can put a lot of things on the bearish side. Again, ask yourself, bullish, bearish. Now at this point, I would say it's very likely to see more bearishness. The last two candles are breaking the lows here. So if you, for example, probably would use the, um, the daily pivot or a regular 20 or 50 period moving average, likely, uh, very likely that the market would show a breakout as well. So very, very different from the uptrend. Now I would say it's very likely to see more bearishness. And you can see the bearish trend unfolded afterwards. Now let's combine chart patterns, candlesticks and indicators. So what we have is a triple tap and decelerating tops. Each high, you can see we're in an uptrend, then we make highs, down, high, down, high, down, high. And the highs are typically coming with a deceleration. So the highs are typically have smaller candles, spinning tops, sometimes pin bars. That's very typical. So just because you see spinning tops or neutral candles at a trend high, that's not enough to get scared out of a trade. But there's more. When we just compare the highs, we start here in the beginning of the trade, uh, the trend, we have a high, we move lower, we break the high, and we make a higher high, right? So far so good. Then what happens? We have the high, we move lower, pull back, we make a higher high, and we break out of this high. But the distance between this high and this high, you can see that. We just look at the distance between the black horizontal lines. It gets smaller. And then from here to here, you can see the market is not able to get above the high. And this is what we call a triple tap. It's also a di um, divergence. This is the RSI. And it shows you that each high is less and less strong. If you see the distance between highs getting smaller, that shows you that the market is losing strength. 
the buyers are not as strong anymore or I would say they're not as many buyers anymore and we have also probably more sellers and a lot of the buyers who previously bought are now really thinking about getting out of their trade especially if they see that the market is showing this sign of weakness and that is contributing to the loss of momentum so we have the divergence the triple taps and the deceleration what we can then also do one of my favorite indicators the daily pivot point this is the central daily pivot point you see that first of all the distance between the pivot points is getting smaller from here to here very large from here to here less and then from here to here also but also what is interesting is the distance from the price to the pivot point it gets smaller and smaller you can see previously we pulled away very far from the pivot point still not too close here we become already close and here we are now almost at the pivot point whenever you see that a trend is changing the pivot structure that's a very very important signal if we fall below the pivot point especially with all of this context here that's a very bearish signal here you can see this is happening we have a trend line breakout we have the double top here we have to increase selling we are below the pivot for the first time and that is now a very very bearish signal and you can very nicely see hopefully during this video that what we're doing here when it comes to candlesticks is very different than what you see typically in candlestick analysis where traders show you a uh, engulfing candle a pin bar and then they just tell you to trade into the direction of the candlestick in my experience this is not enough it's not going to make you any money but looking at candlesticks in a more context way and looking at the whole chart situation that will help you make much better trading decisions and you can see afterwards we roll over and the downtrend is started we have an inside candle so this is quite interesting and different from the outside candles but the context looks quite similar right so here's a downtrend the downtrend bottomed out we had a fake out failed breakout double bottom we have lower highs we have this resistance area that the market broke and tested as support then we have a continuation and I would say a lot of traders when they trade such a breakout are getting easily worried about such candles I've been mentoring traders for I would say six seven eight years something like that and I see that a lot of traders get easily scared out and they lose confidence in their trade and then they don't know what to do because of just one candlestick going against you or not even going against you but one candlestick where the market is not going your way and one thing that is really important to understand is that you need to give your trade first of all time to unfold and also room to unfold that's why in my past videos I spent also a lot of time talking about stop-loss placement don't suffocate your trade give your trade room put your stop-loss away from the price action don't put your stop-loss too close don't move your stop-loss too soon and understand that neutral candles are very common look at the market look at trends how they unfold neutral candles happen all the time and then you can trade much with much more confidence you can see here was the inside candle the market picked up steam again we broke into new highs and now at this point you'll be glad to have waited so the advice that I gave you in the beginning wait with your trading decisions for one more candle can often not always make a huge difference so what I would recommend if you have struggles with staying in winning trades or staying in trades in general give your trade some room also maybe reduce position size because the larger your position the more likely it is that you're also making impulsive emotional trading decisions that will often help you a lot and you can see afterwards the market traded higher and zooming out and looking at the whole trend there's nothing to worry about this little candle you can see it's very normal to see back and forth you see deceleration candles you see wicks so don't be afraid of wicks and small candles evening star one of my favorite patterns it's a three candle sequence first of all it's we want to see it into a trend context so we are in an uptrend here wave one wave two wave three wave four and wave five completed Elliott wave and we have the deceleration pattern you have a strong bullish candle then we have a neutral candle and then a strong bearish candle this is what we call the evening star it's a reversal pattern we can nicely follow the gradual shift of the market you will often see this or a similar pattern but only if it makes sense in the context then it should be traded also I would recommend trading it in a top-down approach find this on a higher time frame then use it as your directional clue 
and then go to the lower time frame and trade into the direction of the evening star. But those are really great patterns that you can start trading and observing and studying. You can see after the evening star we rolled over first into the low and at this point then we would take it step by step maybe into the supply and demand area. But this is a really really great pattern that you can find on any market across time frames. Morning star is the opposite of the evening star. It usually happens in a downtrend. Then you have your strong bearish candle, you have your neutral candle and then a strong bullish candle. At this point, again, if the context is right, maybe this happens at a um, important support and resistance area, supply and demand, even better. Then you would use this as an information to trade long or look for long opportunities. Here you can see when we zoom out, the morning star does make a lot of sense. We have a completed trend probably. Then maybe we have here the round number 0 0.86. If you zoom out, maybe a support and resistance area. And then this pattern makes so much sense in the bigger picture we can then trade it to the upside. The three line striker is also a very important pattern. So it's a complex pattern. We're coming here from a downtrend. We have inside candles, a sudden breakout candle, looks like a continuation first, but then the market reverses and trades into the opposite. Often you will close back above all of this. So this is also a, an engulfing candle. There are a few things about this. First of all, this looks like a continuation, right? We are in a downtrend, Inside candle pullback, not a lot of bullishness, continuation. At this point, I would say there's nothing wrong with jumping on the on the continuation if the whole context makes sense, and then taking the loss afterwards. Totally fine. In trading, nothing works 100%. And this is one of the most important concepts that you can internalize as a trader. Make sure that you understand that no matter how good you are as a trader, no matter how good the system is, no matter how good the setup looks, the trades will fail over and over again. And the job as a trader is to reduce the losses when the system doesn't work and to maximize the wins when it does work. So that when you lose, you don't lose as much. And when you win, you can easily make up for your losses. That's the job of a trader. A trader is not a forecaster. The trader is not a predictor what is happening in the future. We can only work with probabilities. So sometimes we jump on a totally valid setup and it fails, but then you will sometimes get another opportunity, even one candle, two candles, five candles later, and you have another chance. And that is very, very important to always stay open-minded. Don't cling to the setup. If you see that you're short and you have now an opposite signal, don't try to force the downtrend here. Don't try to force the short side. Go with what the market is offering you Get your ego out of the way, close your loss if your stop loss is not taken out, if there is the reason for that, and look for a new opportunity. Here we have the context. You can see strong downtrend. This is where we had the continuation. At this point, I would say there, there's no way we could have known that at this point the, there will be a fake out. So I would say it's a totally valid signal to jump on a short. Then we have the complete opposite signal, engulfing candle, with the component of the fake out. At this point, I would say it's more likely to see longs. And that's what happens here afterwards. You see the slow acceleration then into the uptrend. So I hope you learned something from this video. I think we covered a lot of ground, not only when it comes to candlesticks, but also other trading concepts and very important tips that you can utilize for your trading. If you find this helpful, leave a comment. Let me know what you like most about it. Let me know if you have further questions and I look forward to reading from you.